All right, good morning, or good afternoon, or good day, wherever you happen to be. All right, just did the refresher to make sure everything's looking nice on your guys' side. All right, so this is Paint with Lovejoy and our daily demo, and today's demo is going to be a calla lily, and we are keeping with a rather simple color palette today, so we only have um, what we call limited colors black and white, and yellow and green. All right, everything's looking good. All right, so a little bit of what you're looking at on the screen. I'm working on an eight by 10 uh, canvas panel today. The stretched canvases are usually a little bit taller, and if you're painting on a stretched canvas, when you bring your background color to the edge, I do recommend just carrying it over the side. And then we have our image already drawn on our canvas. So you've got two options for getting this on your canvas. You can pause the video, draw what you see, or um, there's a link in the description box below. You can purchase the traceable, download it, print it out, and then with carbon paper, you transfer it to the canvas. Um, and there's a video on how to transfer that. And the traceable is a nice way for my first time painters to get your composition on your canvas not stress out about trying to draw it and jump right into painting. So whichever option works for you, um, just do that and then you can pick up the video uh, for the painting portion. And if you have any questions today, please feel free to leave a comment um, in the chat or if you're catching the replay, leave a comment below um, and I try to respond to all the questions and comments every day. So nice, nice. So we've got Denise and Rhonda on already. Excellent. So. Thank you guys for hanging out every morning with me. I appreciate it. So for our calla lily today, we're actually gonna get some good practice with wet on wet blending and subtle colors for our calla lily. And then we're gonna go pretty dark um, green and black in the background, and that's gonna give a nice pop. So kind of like yesterday with the gray bunny, uh, we will be working a little bit more monochromatic with a little hint of yellow on our calla lily and then green in the background. So um, I am using a small flat brush just because I'm on a smaller canvas. If you're on something bigger, feel free to use a different brush or something larger. Now, as we fill in this area, um, try a few different brush strokes. You've got kind of the full width of the brush stroke, turning it sideways, a little bit of a skinnier line, and then the favorite stress relieving one is literally making X marks. Um, we are gonna be kind of filling in this whole area from the edges of our lines to the edges of the canvas. And you can see that as I apply my paint, you can actually see through it. You can see some of the canvas. I am using student grade paint and mine happens to be a bit on the transparent side. And I generally recommend um, student grade paint for my first time and beginner painters. So if you're kind of experiencing something like this with your paint, two options. You can grab more paint, apply it kind of thick, and you can see how I'm holding my brush at like a 45 degree angle so that way I'm not pushing the bristles, the ends of the bristles in there. And that gets you a little more opaque coverage or let all this dry and put a second layer on there. Um, you always have to kind of adjust based on what your tools and the variables that you're dealing with um, are giving you for any given painting or any given time that you're painting. So I'm gonna be filling this in. And then like I said, if you're on a stretched canvas, carry this color right around the side. And since we're working with a light colored calla lily, we're gonna be putting white on here. Um, normally I encourage you to just be kind of sloppy and expressive, and if you get paint on the inside, uh, not to worry about it. But because we have such a light colored flower, um, if you get any of your green on the inside, take a paper towel and wipe it off because it would take so many layers of paint for the white to kind of compensate for the darker color, especially since I'm using student grade paint. So just a few things to kind of think about as you get more into painting and setting up your process. And that will come more naturally uh, the more that you paint. And with any painting, if you feel like switching out colors, like if you'd rather do a blue background or purple or red, you know, which would actually look really pretty, feel free. You have full permission to switch out um, anything in my videos. And you can even use markers, crayons, colored pencils. You don't have to just use paint to complete um, any of the videos on my channel. I really just want you to get creative. All right, and let's see, it looks like we got a few more people jumping on. Hi, Mike and Annette 
Excellent. All right. All right, I was just looking to see if there's any questions on there. So, all right, so again, just kind of filling in this space. I'm gonna go through and apply it quicker and thicker. And then once I fill in all this area, we will do a little bit of the wet on wet blending with the black paint, because I want this to be pretty, pretty a dark green. Um, so that way, again, our calla lily is gonna pop and we'll, this, con this composition is what we call more high contrast with the dark background and a bold, bright subject matter. So as you're getting into tinier spaces, if you need to switch down to the pointy brush, go right ahead and do that. And if you realize you're holding your breath, take a big inhale, just release, relax. Even if you're not painting right now, just take a big inhale and be grateful that you're just hanging out in the art and not watching the news. And if you have the news on in the background, turn it off. I do like that painting is just a nice escape from anybody's reality for a short amount of time. And I like that painting is so therapeutic that just the physical act of moving paint on the canvas and transforming a um, white surface into something recognizable, something with movement, something color, you know, even the abstract stuff has, evokes a sense of feeling. It's just a nice to be able to create that. All right, so I'm going around and applying a little bit thicker paint, and then I'm actually gonna slap a little bit of the black on there. And sometimes it's very therapeutic just to say that you're slapping paint on a canvas. All right. All right, so because I'm gonna be mixing, don't necessarily need to worry about cleaning my brush right now. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of black and the black will actually a little bit goes a long way. So I'm gonna slap some right here and then in another spot. And with the wet on wet blending, because your background is wet and you're introducing new wet paint, as you move your brush, the two kind of mix together and you're literally just mixing the paint directly on the canvas but this is how you can get some of the transition shades from one color to the next by doing blending. And again, kind of play with the angle of your brush a little bit more perpendicular. The brush strokes are gonna show up at 45 degree angle sideways. Your brush strokes will be a little bit smoother. And again, that gets more comfortable the more that you paint. Your muscles are taking on, on a lot of information each time that you paint. Your brain's learning what it looks like to mix color. Your muscles are realizing what it feels like to hold the brush and the pressure. So be kind to yourself no matter what stage of painting you are in. All right, so now I'm actually, I want a few places a little more bold black, bold, darker, blackish green. So I'm actually just going grabbing that black and slapping it on here, trying to keep that kind of a 45 degree angle, but some of my brush strokes are still showing up. And if you're getting to the point where you're realizing that this is a much, this darker space is growing to be larger than you wanted, you can always go back, grab that green, and then again, you're just gonna place it right on top of that. So again, this is just a nice, fun place to play with the pressure of your brush, with mixing paint. So spend some time on this area and just enjoy it. I'm going to go back through and go ahead and get a second layer of that green on there and then I'm going to clean the brush um, really good and actually I'm probably going to switch brushes so that way I can keep my water a little more clean. And as you get more and more into painting, um, and when, I probably should set it up one time but I'm kind of limited on table space, but having two water containers, um, one water container for your dark colors and then another water container for your light colors. Um, and it's more so for your light colors. So that way the color, the tint of the water is not gonna change the tint of your white paint or your lighter color. Right. Just checking to see if there's any questions. Cool. And again, I actually got a little bit of that green paint on there. So I'm gonna leave that just to demonstrate how, um, how thick of paint I'm gonna have to put on there so you guys can see at home 
um, just what it takes to kind of put a lighter color on top of a darker color. I think I want that dark space just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go back and add some more black. Then we'll move into the next section. Again, like I said, I like that high contrast. I'm a big fan of black and white photography for that reason. And as you go through the painting process, if you are kind of shaky as you are touching the brush to the canvas, that means you're holding your breath. So just take a big inhale. And again, if you're still finding that you're um, shaky as you apply the paint, exhale as the brush touches the canvas. And that will make it a little bit easier for you. All right, there we go. Now I'm liking it a little bit more that the shadows are a little bit larger. All right. Okay, so we're going to move into painting the calla lily. And I think for this one, we're going to do a bit of um, a different type of blending. It's still going to be the wet on wet, but I'm going to lay a base color on here, which will basically just be the white. Um, so again, it's going to be a lot of fun just putting white on here. But having this base of white and then introducing a little bit of some light gray, uh, maybe a little bit of medium gray, and then even start to introduce the yellow and using that base of white um, to blend into. All right, so to keep my water kind of clean, I'm just going to put this brush off to the side. I don't necessarily recommend um, allowing your brushes to sit with acrylic paint on them. So I'm going to make sure I clean that really good when we're done with this demo. But I am moving to a fresh brush. My water is still pretty clean and this is where we get to be awesome contemporary abstract contemporary painters putting white on a white canvas. Uh, so basically I'm going to go and fill all this area in and then we're going to use the pointy brush um, to apply some of our light shades, our subtle shades. And if anybody has done some watercolors, and I've, I've taught, I think, one or two demos for the watercolors, and I am working on um, the full tutorials, having a few issues with the getting the colors correct and the lighting on the filming. So it's always something. But I am working on those. They're getting there. Um, and I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, so applying this white first, it's kind of doing the wet on wet blending for watercolor where you would put the water on first and then put a little, uh, what we call charging, of the color in that water and let it diffuse. So we're just doing it in a slightly different manner with acrylic paint and a bit more interaction from the artist for the blending. And as you're applying your white paint to your white portion of your canvas, it may be kind of hard to see um, if there's an area that you actually applied it or if it's just the bare canvas. So kind of get maybe eye level with your canvas, look at it from a few different angles and anywhere that's shiny, that means there's paint on it. Anywhere that's just kind of matte and flat, that's still the bare canvas. So um, nice way to see where you still need to add your paint. And because this paint's transparent, I can just go right over my black lines from the traceable. And I, uh, after do, uh, applying my transfer with the traceable, I went back over these with a Sharpie marker so that way you guys at home could see it a little bit better. So if you did not do the Sharpie marker and I don't necessarily recommend doing it, um, you may wanna be a little more conscious as you come up next to your line so you can just kind of keep that little spiral uh, shape without applying paint on top of it. And here I'm going to move down to the small pointy brush. Just again, getting that first layer of white on top of that green. And because it's wet, it is picking up a little bit of that green and changing the color of my white. So if that happens to you, just wipe off um, that excess kind of white green tinted paint and then grab more pigment, grab more white.
All right, so as we do our subtle shades, I've got enough paint on here. And generally with acrylic paint, um, depending on your brand, you should have about 10 to 20 minutes of working time for the paint to stay wet so you can do some of your blending. If you happen to be on fast drying paint, um, maybe watch this whole process and then maybe when you do yours, just do it section by section. So maybe you'll just apply your white paint here and then you'll go in with the medium gray and then maybe you apply your white paint here and then go in with the light gray. So you might have to break it down a little bit more into smaller sections if you have paint that dries faster. All right, so we're gonna start with, um, let's start with a light gray. So we're gonna make that first and pull a little bit of white aside. A tiny, tiny amount of black goes a long way. So I kind of like to put the pigment that I'm gonna mix into the lighter color on the edge, leave what's on my brush, and then that way I can start mixing with it and go, do I need more black? And you can always pull more in. Or if I need to even go lighter, I can pull more white into that. And again, the more that you paint, the more this style of blending and mixing paint will get comfortable and kind of become second nature. All right, so since I'm kind of going in some controlled, tighter spaces, I'm gonna go back to that pointy brush and we're gonna pick up this light gray and our first shadow that we're gonna do is gonna kind of hang around um, this little curve, this almost elongated C shape or the beginning of that spiral. So I'm putting it above um, that black line from the traceable and basically gonna make that line on here and then we're gonna blend it up. And let me take a quick look in the phone. Yes, it is showing up there, not too bad. I'm gonna make mine just a touch darker. I do want you guys using a little bit lighter. I'm gonna make mine just a little bit darker so it shows up a little bit better on the video for you. All right, so just kind of making this weird elongated C shape. And then I like to actually pull off the excess paint here and then wipe off that brush. So I'm kind of with the dry brush, not completely dry and it still has a little bit of the color on there. And then we've got two blending styles that I've shown in the demos. One um, that's also very therapeutic, we call it the stabbing method. And literally you're just kind of tapping your brush on there. You can do it with kind of at the end. And what that's doing is literally smushing the darker gray into the white and kind of creating a new color. That particular method will uh, ruin the tips of your bristles of your brushes a little bit faster, um, but it's still a nice kind of fun therapeutic way to blend. So give it a try. The one that I'm gonna use today because I wanna kind of keep it a little bit more smooth, it's almost like a, just a push and a smear. And I'm kind of just medium pressure pulling this gray up into the white and you can see that it starts to diffuse a little bit. Um, I wanna keep the darkest part of the gray here and then gets lighter as it moves up here, uh, moves away from that area. And again, if you realize that you got something pretty dark in there, grab more white paint, you can slap it on there and then you can kind of blend it in. So with the wet on wet blending, it is a lot of kind of back and forth um, maybe you add the darker color, then maybe go back and add the base color. And again, you adjust based on the variables that you have at this particular moment of painting. And each day is a little bit different. All right, so we're gonna take that gray, we're gonna put it in a few other places. So we're gonna have a little bit of a curve right here on our calla lily. It's not gonna be right on the edge. It's gonna be, you know, what, maybe a quarter, less than a quarter of an inch from that edge doesn't have to be exact. So again, just kind of laying that on there and I want that rim, that edge to stay pretty white. So again, wipe off that excess paint. And now this time we're gonna be blending down, blending into this part. And while we're painting this, we are creating a really nice illusion, a 3D illusion. So I tell all my students that you are magicians as you paint, you're creating this illusion of space and an object on a flat surface. So since this flower is white by adding the shades of gray, that's what's giving us the illusion of depth. So going back to that gray, we're gonna put a little bit right here on the edge. And same thing, it's not touching um, the edge of the flower. And then we're gonna blend it um, 
away from the edge, away from that perimeter. And then if you want to, as you kind of get that in there, you can go through with that light pressure, maybe smooth out other brush strokes if you want to go for the smooth texture. Or if you want to have a bit more expressive, um, maybe moving your brush stroke in this kind of spiral direction and creating um, visual movement with your brush strokes. Many, so many things you can try. So just if you're inclined, go for it. Okay, so that down. Now we're going to move into a little bit of green and yellow. Actually, let's start with the yellow first. Um, again, just kind of gives you a good feel for it. So I'm just cleaning that brush out and let's see, let's start with the pure yellow first and then we'll use a little bit of residual for the rest of the area because the, um, the center of our calla lily, pretty sure it's called the stamen, if I remember correctly, that's pretty bright yellow. So we're going to fill in that whole area and I'm going to make sure I go over the black Sharpie marker lines. And then using the residual of the yellow paint that's on here, um, we're going to move into, I guess, kind of the center twist here. Slap some of that on there. Then we have a little bit hanging out here. And then there's actually a little bit hanging out on top of that gray. All right, so again, wipe that brush off. And I'm gonna start with this last area. We're gonna slightly light pressure, blend that in. It's kind of a smush and smear um, into that gray. And then same thing as we move into this area. And again, if you need to, if your paint's starting to dry out, grab more white and you can blend that into it. And that will also diffuse the color that you just introduced. It will uh, tone down this yellow just a little bit. And then that's pretty intense already, so I'm going to grab some white, and my paint is starting to dry a little bit. So just grabbing some of that white just to soften that and diffuse it, and I'm keeping it pretty close. And then we're going to go back and apply some pure white to that corner, to that edge of this spiral section of the flower. Okay, and let's see, leaving that residual again, because there's still some hints of yellow in there. Let's kind of sweep it through. This would be what we would consider kind of a reflecting color on the other part. And as the pigment is kind of diffusing on my brush, um, it's less and less saturated. Okay, so now we're gonna kind of do that same thing with just a touch of green. We've got a little bit of green and it's a little kind of yellow green. Um, and it's almost going to be kind of hook, kind of frame that area. Now this green is way too dark than what I want right now. So I'm going to put some of this here, leave that little bit that's on the brush, start mixing. I want to go a little bit darker than that. All right, and then same thing. We're going to place it on here and then blend it in. So I'm kind of going right on top of those black lines right underneath this curve and then kind of coming up the edge right here. Okay, so now wiping off that excess paint and then same thing, light pressure. You're going to blend that into that yellow whitish color that we were just working with. And as you get more and more into the groove of painting and as you get towards this stage and even further away, um, or further along, get in the groove of getting out of your chair, walking five to 10 feet away and looking at your painting from a distance. And that's the normal viewing distance for most artwork and most things in life. And learning to look at your artwork from that distance while you're working on it, um, and then going back and changing things based on what you see from that distance just makes you um, a more well-rounded artist. It, you're considering what the viewer is gonna be looking at uh, when they look at your work. So being an artist, you just have to look at stuff from so many different perspectives, just as a human being. So we all have to look at stuff from many perspectives. All right, so now I'm making a darker gray. We're gonna intensify a few shadows. Um, and 
Actually, there's not too much more after this. All right, this moved along rather quickly and nicely. All right, so again, kind of uh, a little bit in between a dark gray and a medium gray. And this is gonna intensify a few of the shadows. And building on the same application, I'm just gonna apply this in the areas I want it, and then we're gonna blend it in. And if you have to mix your shade of gray a couple of times, don't stress on the exact same shade each time. I'm just proud of you for painting at home. do a little bit lighter on that one okay so we'll use a little bit we'll go a little bit lighter on the next step so I'm gonna clean that brush off really good same thing from before just keep that light pressure if you need to you can go back and make that kind of yellowish green again and as we get into smaller and smaller spaces um, sometimes this is where using light pressure and that stabbing method will help you kind of keep um, a bit more of the concentration of the darker area here as it blends into the lighter area. So it, again, just the more that you paint, the more you're gonna find a comfort level with the blending and the more it becomes just second nature. And then here I'm gonna use, just put a little touch of white on my brush since my paint is starting to dry out. And that does just kind of help hydrate the pigment just a little bit more for some of the blending. All right, so I'm gonna go back to that medium gray, a little bit lighter, get a shadow underneath here. And I want to make this one a little bit stronger. Oh, so that one actually, let's go a little bit darker. And sometimes that happens, you know, we interpret colors based on what's next to it. So I realized it needed to be a little bit darker. So that's what a lot of painting is about. So don't be afraid if you need to adjust a color after you've made it because it's not darker or lighter or the right shade or anything. All right, and this one I'm leaving most pigment off, just a little hint, touch of water on it, but it is kind of dry. And again, just kind of softening that edge. Remember to breathe. All right, and that part's pretty dry. So again, just grabbing that white helps just to rehydrate the paint a little bit and help with blending. Okay, and pretty good on white. I'm going to put a little more on there because now we're going to go pretty heavy handed in um, what we would consider the highlight areas. And it, they're really subtle since it is a white flower, so it's kind of hard to always see it. All right, so clean that brush off. Um, I'm thinking this one and this highlight area will be a little bit more of a pop. So because we have this darker color here, Oh, let me get that extra water droplet off my brush. All right, so because we have that um, darker gray kind of to the left of it, because I'm placing, and because I'm student grade paint, really I'm trying to place it thick on here so it stays more opaque, it will flatten out a little bit as it dries. But as I put this almost pure white next to the shadow on the left of it, um, Visually, this is kind of the, the magic that happens. Visually, the light color pops forward and the darker color pushes backwards. All right, so same thing here, basically just kind of continuing that spiral around. Do the same thing right here. And this is gonna be on the outside of the flower. So um, 
whatever you guys paint today or whenever you paint this, please email me photos of your pictures of this painting or any painting that you do on my channel. Um, email them, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. When I post those to social media, I can't even begin to tell you how much that encourages other people to paint. So you guys are instrumental in spreading the word about my channel, getting other people to paint. Um, even if it's from a different teacher, painting is stress relieving and we need more stress free people in this world. So share with your community, your creative process and encourage them to get into theirs. Um, if you want to see future demos that we'll be doing, uh, scroll to the main page on my YouTube channel and you can see the future streams and even bookmark what you need. Um, if you have any suggestions, leave a comment in the chat or um, in the comments below. And I've got a new running list for what you guys have been suggesting and I'll add it to the demo. Um, if you want to dive in even further to your skills, Check out my online school, Paint with Love Joy, and check out the online Paint Your Pet class, as well as the intro to knife scraping. All right, just looking to see if there was any questions, because I realized I kind of got into the blending and forgot to look over. And I think we're good. All right, glad you guys are enjoying this today. Awesome. Okay. Um, and for the classes on the online school, um, the Paint Your Pet class, you'll get into not quite this type of blending, but you'll get into the concept of the value scale to where we had our dark shadow, our dark area, um, kind of the light gray would be our medium area, and then the pure whites are highlight, and that's your value scale. So when you learn your value scale by painting your pet, something you really care about, you actually learn so much more out of the process. And I've taught that class here in San Diego for probably the last seven, eight years. And I'd say 85% of my students had never picked up a brush or had a bad childhood experience with art um, and never got into it, never carried it into their adult life, but all impressed themselves when they painted their pet. So basically, I'm just trying to get you guys to be more and more creative. All right, so this looks pretty good. I think this will get us into the conclusion for today. Um, again, when this dries, the parts where it's that really thick white, it will flatten, and we do have a little bit of shadow just from the light and the thickness of the paint. Um, but I look forward to seeing what you guys paint and getting into it. So thanks again for hanging out with me this morning and every morning, I really, really appreciate it. And I look forward to painting with you guys tomorrow. And it looks like I think we got a peacock up next tomorrow. So have a great day, and I will catch up with you guys later. Cheers. <laughs>